Sheep ranching is an Idaho tradition that dates back to the 1880s. Scottish immigrants like Andy Little, who was known as the Idaho Sheep King, brought sheep ranching know-how to Idaho and established the industry in a state with lots of open range. Basque sheep herders played a major role as well, finding jobs tending the sheep flocks in Idaho as they had done in the Basque region of Spain. The Basques brought cultural traditions to Idaho that are still celebrated today. At the peak in the 1930s, there were hundreds of sheep ranching outfits in Idaho, running more than 2.7 million sheep statewide. Nowadays, there are fewer than 45 sheep ranchers and 180,000 sheep overall. Frank Schertz is one of the last sheepmen standing. He runs 12 bands, or about 28,000 ewes and lambs, from the low country in Wilder to the high country in the Boise and Payette National Forests every year. In the spring, Schertz sheep flocks navigate through the Boise foothills, a popular recreation zone next to Idaho's largest city. And in the high country, Schertz Peruvian herders cope with predators like coyotes, black bears, mountain lions, and wolves. In August, after the lambs have hiked more than 120 miles in the rugged mountains, they're ready to be shipped to the market. That's when Schertz gets a deep sense of satisfaction. You got a pretty band of sheep. You just love it. You love working with them. You love to make them good. And when, but shipping time, and you go in those big old fat lambs and beautiful, you've seen them up there. They're going on that truck and it just, God, just swells you up for another go. <laughs> In this story on sheep ranching in Idaho, we're going to follow a year in the life of the sheep, from lambing to shipping, grazing, and shearing. Lambing begins at the Schertz Ranch in Wilder in January. This is when ewes give birth to the lambs in the first three months of the year. It's a busy time. Well, this is what we call the night crowd. We bring the ewes in here before they give birth and uh, as they lamb, the guys, they take them into the shed and they'll take care of them all night long. In the cold weather, it's very vital to get them, get them out of here fast. One of the guys down here, see what kind of milk they have and that decides how many lambs we put on them. We put one lamb or two lambs. Uh, a lot of you have triplets, but we only leave them two lambs. And every day, we haul them out in groups they're all coated, number branded. Every band's got a different color of paint on it. And every morning, we're rolling these lambs, using lambs out of here. And then these pins are all cleaned like they was 100 years ago with a wheelbarrow and a pitchfork. When we're really lambing, 250 ewes or the 300 a day. The lambs and ewes are put into pens with clean, fresh straw next to the lambing shed, where the lambs acclimate to their new life. These lambs here come out of the shed this morning. It was probably born the day before yesterday. And we can see the numbers. Their mother's branded with the same. These are all twins here. And the mother, like they're 263, and the mother's 263. So, and all down this line, they've been branded, numbered, numbered along until we get a full band again. Frank says it's best to let the lambs feed with their mothers in a small group setting with plenty of space for best survival. The slower you can go with these twins, it, the better. After several days, the crew moves the ewes and lambs into a larger pen with twice as many animals. Three days later, they'll move into a pen with triple the number of ewes and their lambs. This procedure gets the animals used to being part of larger groups. Eventually, they form a full band of sheep, or about 2,400 ewes and lambs. That's why it's so much work. You know, we got pens here probably for 3,000 head of ewes. But once you hit that end of that line, the sheep out in the front got to be moved and you got to work clear back to every day. Of course, they come out here, but you got to work clear back. So we got room. We always want room for the next day's lambs coming out. So they got to move and move and move. And I mean, you move a lot of sheep. Schertz employs 25 Peruvian sheep herders year round to take care of his sheep. The men who work during the lambing process are the same guys who herd the sheep through the mountains in the summer. Lambing takes about three to four months to complete. 
Once they're done, the crews clean up the corrals and get their gear ready for spring turnout. We clean all these pins and tarps off the sheds and we get, then the boys will get the pack strings ready and the horse and mules and by then it'll be time to go. In early April, it's time for spring turnout. The sheep begin grazing on public land pastures as they green up and produce forage for livestock and other critters. We go out out here on the desert, right, uh, some of them north of Parma, which uh, in the Black Canyon they call the allotment, and then they'll work across autumn to the Boise front. But they all got a designated route that that herder knows where they're going. Each band of sheep is cared for by two herders. The herders carry a wall tent and camp supplies on pack mules and horses moving the camp every day or so as the sheep move through the country. I run pack strings in the mountains. Probably 80% of sheep outfits in America and maybe 90, only they run one man to the camp. And, but I run two because I'm in this rough wolf inhabiting country. Each band is also accompanied by two Great Pyrenees guard dogs to help keep predators at bay. Frank's sheep arrive at the Boise foothills in mid-April, just as the foothills are greening up. Schertz trucks the sheep to a variety of drop-off points to keep the bands spread out, including popular trailheads such as the Corrals Trailhead and Hull's Gulch. These trailheads have lots of recreation traffic, so the Idaho Rangeland Resource Commission puts the word out in local news media and recreation websites to give hikers, bikers, runners, and dog walkers a heads up when the sheep are entering the foothills, and how to coexist and interact with the sheep and guard dogs. Two key things to remember are keeping dogs on a leash and getting off your bike and walking through sheep herds to avoid antagonizing the big guard dogs. Unfortunately, when a recreationist has their pet with them, the guard dogs consider that a predator. And we don't want to see any kind of negative thing happen to somebody's pet. Jim Dufre saw a news report about the importance of getting off the bike when encountering sheep. We dropped down to this little draw, and sure enough, there's hundreds of sheep you know, out there. And I said, I'm getting off my bike. Uh, we can't see the dogs, but I just said, you know, it's just a respectful thing to do. And he says, all right, so he gets off his bike, and two seconds later, these huge Great Pyrenees, two big dogs just come charging over a little knoll, barking and come within 10 feet of our bikes. And we're off of them, and they stop, they look at us, and then they just turn around and take off. And Jess and I look at each other saying, it worked. Frank Schertz says most people in Boise like seeing the sheep. 95% of them, they just love to see those sheep. And they're just so excited about them, and they want to know about them and everything about it. And so you get people from out, of, well, people right here in Boise. I've had, God, we didn't know this was happening up here. This is so neat. This is so the old times. You got to run them right. You got to respect each other. There's no doubt about that. Shirts and his herders move three bands of sheep through the Boise foothills. Some bands graze over the top of the Boise Ridge to Roby Creek next to Lucky Peak and others stay low and graze across the Boise River Wildlife Management Area managed by Idaho Fish and Game. Fish and Game officials say they like the sheep to graze on white top, a noxious weed. The sheep have been at least as useful over there as spraying and a lot less impact. Sheep grazing even helps reduce fire danger in the foothills. I think it is vitally important. It takes a lot of the fuel load out of it. It has to. When the sheep reach Roby Creek Park, the herders funnel the animals to a crossing where shirts can count them, checking on the numbers three weeks after they've been released in the mountains. He does that to check on predator losses. We had a lot of coyote problems on the Boise front. I think the wolves are pushing those coyotes off in there worse because we didn't used to have the trouble there. After the count, the sheep move down the paved road to a steep, rocky embankment where the herders work with the lead U to climb through a rough spot to Idaho State Highway 21. When you get in a tight spot, sometimes they don't want to go. We have a U that's broke the lead. We try to have one in every band. She's got a bell on her, and then she's got a lamb that'll follow her and the U's, then they'll lead out and usually follow through those tough spots. Once on top, Frank Schertz and his foreman stop traffic on Idaho 21 as the sheep cross the highway. 
motorists take photos and wave to the herders as the sheep move through. From this point forward, the sheep will be grazing on state and forest service land as they follow the grain up into the mountains. Schertz says the range is in pretty good shape this year. I'm not griping. Yeah, you gotta keep moving because some of the lower country getting dry faster, but we're a lot better shape than Eastern Idaho. They've missed a lot of these rains that we got. But sheep man's gotta have something to holler about it. <laughs> Schertz has permits to graze his sheep on state, BLM, and forest service land. He pays grazing fees to those agencies for the privilege of using the land. Forest Service officials pay attention to range readiness before sheep move onto national forest lands. There are certain key species that we look at. Arrow leaf balsam root, poa babosa. We're also looking at agripyrin, uh, wheatgrass species. Uh, we look at cheatgrass, etc. We look at the skeleton weed, which is an invader here, a noxious weed. But basically 10 days ago, it wasn't quite ready. It's more than ready right now. Indeed, as Schertz unloaded sheep to some Boise National Forest land next to Arrow Rock Reservoir, the sheep began feeding on rush skeleton weed, bitterbrush, and more. We have several objectives in mind. One of them is to graze the rosettes of rush skeleton weed. They like to eat it this time of year. We also have biocontrol agents on the skeleton weed. We have a rust, a midge, and a mite. What we're trying to do here is have the sheep utilize this uh, to weaken that plant. The biocontrols can be more effective. The Forest Service keeps watch over the sheep grazing to ensure that the utilization does not exceed 50%. But we still want to look at proper management. Frank is in the business to put pounds on the lambs. And when he's doing that, the mothers, the ewes, and the lambs have to move to new feed all the time. And so very rarely that they will graze more than 30% use. Livestock grazing uh, stimulates the growth of the grass as long as it's proper management. And the same with utilizing the bitter brush. We just want to graze it enough that it stimulates leader growth. Allowing the sheep to graze on bitter brush makes the browse species much more palatable for mule deer in the winter, Miller says. Frank Schertz is a very good permittee, very proactive. Schertz trains his men to graze the country once over lightly as they pass through. Sheep's not a, what you call a grass eater. If they got the brush and the forbs, that's what they do good and that's what they want to eat. And it's just like a kid in the candy store. He's going through there picking them flowers off and that little brush and tasting everything. They all got a, all got a designated route that that herder knows where they're going. And he works every day. He works those little canyons, those little fingers. And every, he'll go down one little draw in the sprint in the morning, and the sheep will buck up the day during the heat. They'll take their siesta. Then he'll kick them out, and they'll come up another canyon. They'll just graze along, eating the brush and the forbs. They'll take a lot of that undergrowth out of it, which it, and we push them down and you know it just takes a it helps the forest an awful lot it takes so much of that fire out of there the herder wants to give them fresh feed which is better for the lambs and you that that piece of ground never gets grazed again until the next year so now how can you overgraze it every two weeks or so shirts and his foreman resupply the herders in the forest with fresh groceries and supplies this is a time to catch up on how the sheep are doing talk about predators and life in general In early August, it's time to herd the ewes and lambs into a corral and ship the lambs to market. Schertz has a sheep corral in Meadow Creek on the Boise National Forest where they gather the sheep. A lot of friends camp out with Schertz to help gather the sheep. The herders move the sheep into the corrals while Schertz counts them. Mario makes a notch on a stick for every 100 sheep that move into the corral. It's shipping time. We've been taking care of them since January, February when they started lambing and they've started wilder and they've worked their way back here and they come up over the high mountains and it's time to send them to the market. Well, they look good. 
be the beautiful mountain lamb. The lambs look good. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with them. Schertz says he lost about 80 head of sheep to coyotes, wolves, and black bear this year. He also lost a few to falling timber in old burn areas. These mountains, you got lots of things. Yeah, every year we'll get a bunch of sheep killed with those trees. Schertz sees those losses as a cost of doing business running sheep on public lands. Oh, yeah. At shipping time, the mood is upbeat. It's time to celebrate. For these folks, they work all year, and now, that, now it's payday, and they hope it's a good one. You know, it is a celebration. Of, it's a perfect excuse to, to get into the mountains and, uh, you know, enjoy the camaraderie and, and the families. You can see there's a lot of kids out here this morning. Frank Schertz is probably one of the largest operators in the western United States. There's probably around 45 producers in the state of Idaho that utilize uh, the public lands at one time or another during the year. Yeah. And uh, probably, uh, you know, easy 60 to 70 percent of his lambs could come right off of the range, having nothing more than mother's milk and, and green grass. You can't ask for anything better. Yeah. There's, there's no feed additives or hormones or, you know, antibiotics yeah. at all. It's a natural lamb. Early the next morning, the crew gets the loading chutes in place next to the sheep corral for loading the sheep into special truck trailers made especially for hauling sheep to market. We load them correctly so there's no death loss. We're putting 35 in the basket, 52 on the top, and there's a gate that separates them. And then the 54 on, on the middle two decks. So you just make sure that they're loaded with lots of room so they have, have room to move around. Uh, federal law says they have to be unloaded within 36 hours for feed and water, but these will be in Denver. What time is it now? About 8, eight in the morning. They'll be in Denver by 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. So they're, they don't, you know, it's a straight haul, and these guys don't mess around. They, they'll sleep coming home right now. Their, their mission is to get these lambs offloaded while they're in good shape. Each trucker will haul about 195 lambs to a feedlot in Colorado where they are sold by national meat packing companies to wholesale outlets. The truckers make about $3,800 per load to Denver. Then they deadhead back to Idaho and do it again. It's their payday too. While the lambs are being loaded into trucks, the ewes are placed in a separate corral with rams for breeding. We put a couple bucks in the night, put the rams in and some of these mamas will have babies in their belly tomorrow night, so we started all over. After shipping, the herders trail the ewes back through the forest and foothills towards the home ranch in the fall. In October, the sheep pass through the Boise foothills and cross Idaho 55 near Beacon Light Road in Eagle. Schertz makes arrangements with farmers in the Treasure Valley so his sheep can graze their way home, eating stubble and hay fields along the way. We got to use that feed. The price of hay and corn nowadays, you got to, you got to utilize it every bit you can. The sheep come in, they take that old growth, especially if you got that tall hay, and everything they take off of, they put it right back on the ground. And they they really help the ground fertilize and stuff. Well, you can't believe the the rodent help it helps with those mice in those fields. They time it so the sheep don't arrive at the home ranch until January, when lambing begins. In November, as the sheep are grazing the fields, Schertz brings the sheep to a ranch along the way to shear the wool from the ewes and rams. He hires several shearing crews to do the job. Each shearing crew has a customized shearing trailer with all of the tools and equipment needed for shearing sheep. Schertz herders funnel the sheep into a chute leading to the shearing trailer and work the animals through one by one. There are three to four men that shear the sheep in each trailer. John Balderson of Council has been shearing sheep for over 30 years. He explains how shearing is done. You start on the brisket and you take the belly wool off and you throw it aside because the wool on the belly has got, well, hates string pieces and, and it's shorter most generally. They like to keep it bagged separate. And then you'll go down and you'll crotch them all out and then you'll start on this leg and then you come up and go up the neck and take this front shoulder off like that and you'll turn that sheep around and you'll take this whole side off 
and then you'll pick her up and then you'll start coming down this last side and when you get done that sheep can just jump out the door behind you and this fleece here you can pick that up and literally throw it out as a blanket i mean it will all stay together alderson says it's critical that the shearer cuts the wool off close to the skin and it needs to be cut off as a full cape part of it is to keep the sheep tight where you don't take the hide off your comb cutter will take the hide right off if it's in the wrong position workers take the capes from the front of the shearing trailer and put them into a compactor the machine compacts the wool until they are full then a worker closes the top of the bale and loads it into a truck. Each bale of wool weighs about four to five hundred pounds. Back in the day, the shearing crew compacted the wool by foot. One of the workers would stand on the load and then climb out when it was full. Balderson has been shearing sheep year-round in Idaho and elsewhere. He's been doing it since he was in high school. I shear anybody with two head to uh, five thousand. Alderson's pay depends on how fast he can shear the sheep. He gets paid $4 per sheep. When I was younger, I used to try to do 20 an hour. And then on good days, you'd do 25 or better an hour. You know, you try to do anywhere 150 to 200, but uh, things are getting slower and slower. Uh, ever since I was, I was still run pretty strong when I was 58, but I'm 65 now, so I'm getting slower and slower and don't care anymore. <laughs> if I do 90 or 100, I feel good. Schertz likes to shear the sheep before lambing season in the winter. It makes them milk better. And then you, they, and, the, and the lamb, see all this? Lamb can find the udder a lot better. The second crew shearing sheep for Frank Schertz is from Uruguay. They work for Bernie Fairchild of Buell, Idaho. Balderson says it's hard to find anyone in America who really knows how to shear sheep. Extremely hard. That's one reason why we have one trailer pump full of guys from Uruguay. Schertz keeps the bales of wool in storage until the wool prices are best. Sometimes he's held onto the wool for several years until the price is right. He sells the wool through a global distributor. This is a medium to fine Ramble A type, you know. This is what they'll make uh, good shirts, blankets, uh, that kind of stuff out of. Frank Schertz has been in the sheep business for more than 30 years. He's seen the markets go up and down and dealt with a lot of other issues over the years. But he loves to raise sheep. You know, I've always bought markets all your life. When you get a pretty band of sheep or something, you, you just, you know, I think, gosh, damn, I miss that. You know, you just love it. You love working with them. You love to make them good. You know, it's something you're proud of. They got to be taken care of. Somebody's with them 24 hours a day. Uh, and they're, they're taking care of them. 